Hi, I'm Kalila Reynolds and welcome to Taking Stock. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. So come on, let's get this money. First up, data insight firm Blue Dot buys back SSL Venture Capital's 50% stake in the company. Why? We'll find out from founder and CEO Lauren Peart. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. The Jamaican dollar has slipped even further against the U.S., trading last week at $146.10 to one U.S. How is this impacting business? And key insurance stock price jumps over 300% in one month. We'll discuss. But first, here's What's Hot, brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. Sections of St. Mary are now under quarantine as cases continue to rise in that parish. Jamaica producers JP Tropical Group, the largest private employer in the parish, says it's moving to secure the safety and livelihood of staff as well as operations directly impacted by the quarantine. Elsewhere in the country, restrictions, including the nightly curfew, have been extended. However, discussions surrounding a gradual reopening of the economy are ongoing. The Prime Minister has announced that a decision could be made soon on the reopening of bars, which were ordered to remain closed until May 31. And schools will physically reopen in September, but online distance learning continues until July. The first batch of Jamaicans stranded overseas finally returned home last week. The government is spending some $64 million to house them in quarantine facilities under the Controlled Reentry Program. The first 129 nationals, including 73 cruise workers, landed at the Norman Manley International Airport Wednesday evening on a chartered TUI flight from the United Kingdom. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith says the full cost per day to quarantine each Jamaican is 100 U.S. dollars for three daily meals and accommodation. Going forward, nationals applying for repatriation will be asked to contribute 20 U.S. dollars per day for the 14-day quarantine. Discussions are now ongoing with various cruise line operators across the world to bring home more than 2,000 workers stranded overseas. 250,000 persons who applied for the one-time Compassionate Grant under the government's CARE program have begun receiving their payouts. Lines at remittance companies such as Western Union stretched down the stairs and around the block in some places. People without bank accounts are allowed to collect their payments at remittance companies. Approximately 95% of compassionate grant applicants, or 380,000 out of the 400,000 persons who applied, have been verified as eligible for support. However, only 250,000 have a verified bank account or approved remittance outlet. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the process has been stalled for over 50% of eligible applicants due to challenges with their banking details. They're being notified and given the opportunity to update their information. The Jamaican dollar again slipped to its weakest point against its U.S. counterpart last week. On May 7, the average selling rate for the greenback was a record $146.10. It moved from the previous record of $145.08 just a day earlier. At the end of the trading week, the dollar was still selling for an average $146 to 1 U.S. The local currency has lost 8% in value since Jamaica's first COVID case in early March. The Jamaican dollar has been under pressure from the slowdown in the flow of foreign exchange in the island due to the closure of the tourism industry and declines in remittances. The productive sector in particular has been experiencing a shortage of foreign exchange for the past two months, forcing the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, to appeal to the Bank of Jamaica for direct access to U.S. currency for three months. However, the bank has responded that the appeal may not be the best solution to address the problem. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Staten is reporting that for January, revenues from exports dipped by 28%, falling to 103 million U.S. dollars when compared with the 142 million U.S. earned in the corresponding period last year. Imports for the period also declined by 15 percent, 
moving to 514 million U.S. dollars from the 603 million spent in the same period of the previous year. Meanwhile, another set of statistics is being impacted by the continued threat of COVID-19. This time, it's the 2021st quarter figures for the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce's Business and Consumer Confidence Survey. As a result of the pandemic, those numbers will be presented alongside the second quarter numbers in early July. The usual survey activities undertaken by market research services were curtailed to reduce the risk to both interviewers and interviewees. Instead of the typical face-to-face method, interviews were mostly done via phone calls and online questionnaires. The quarter's results are still being tabulated. Four more applicants are vying to provide mobile payment services in various formats under the Bank of Jamaica's new fintech regulatory sandbox. The BOJ says the sandbox provides a platform to encourage innovations in financial services and promote competition and financial inclusion. Two of the applications are from regulated entities to offer a prepaid card, and two applications are from fintech companies. The central bank says it's waiting on applications from two other entities requesting to offer mobile wallets and prepaid cards. What's Hot was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. And when we come back, founder and CEO of Blue Dot Data Intelligence, Laren Peart, joins us. This segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agent. Insurance made easy. Welcome back to Taking Stock. With the crippling effect of COVID-19 on many businesses, one entrepreneur is investing all his efforts and money into his own company at a time when others are cutting back. Now, it's a very courageous move in a time of uncertainty. Joining us now is founder and CEO of Blue Dot Data Intelligence, Laren Peart. All right. Thanks for joining me, Laren. How are you doing? Um, I'm all right. Thanks. How are you? Good to hear. So how have you been coping with COVID-19, you and your company? Uh, well, we're just trying to survive like everyone else. You know, there, there was, a, I guess, the first two weeks were a bit, a lot, a lot of planning had to happen in those, in those two weeks. Um, and, but we've since made some, some good recovery and pivoted started offering most of our services online so we're we're i'd say we're not back to normal but we're we're getting there mm. that's interesting because i thought that most of your services were online to begin with but, but tell me a bit about no. what what blue dot does just explain for the viewers and the listeners so we're an insights agency and what i mean by that is that we use data and insights to help our clients to make better decisions so we, we collect data out in the field. So we go out with tablets to collect data, you know, from the you know consumers, um, etc. And then we also do data mining and data analytics um, of you know existing databases to to get insights from that. In short, so in in other words, we help our we help our clients to make make, make better decisions with data. So now with COVID nineteen mm-hmm. and the recommendations for social distancing. How have you been able to pivot your business right. to do that? Good, good question. So we had started our digital transformation months ago, almost a year ago to be exact in June. Next month would be a year. So we've launched our own um, and the Caribbean's first online panel or, or what we call an online insights community. And what that is, is that it's, uh, we have now a database of over 6,000 Jamaicans who we can poll in an instant and it's segmented. So if I wanted to, you know, if some client of ours wanted to survey um, a, a woman between the ages of 25 to 35 that have kids who have a car loan um, and who drink alcohol, we could literally go into our database and send a survey only to those um, uh, that segment. And then the respondents, they get paid. So, so far we've paid out over um, over $3 million to, to Jamaicans just for doing surveys. So you literally get paid for your opinion. Um, and that has allowed us to answer your question. That has allowed us to still be able to operate and to conduct surveys um, in these in these COVID times. Let's come now to, to a more recent development. I read it in the paper and I, I recall that Blue Dot had been 
a portion of the company had been acquired by SSL Venture Capital. Mm -hmm. And so I'm reading the papers now, just like normal, my normal Friday papers. I think it might have been the Financial Gleaner or one of those. And I see this announcement that you have bought back that portion of the company that SSL Venture Capital had. So that must have been a really brave move for you to do, especially in these times of yeah. uncertainty. So tell me what right. led to that decision. Yeah, so, so interestingly, a very well-noted economist called me a couple of days after and, and like literally gave it to me and asked me, why on earth would I take such a risk right now? You know, mm -hmm. um, to, to buy about the company, and um, I mean, he's he he was right. It it was a huge risk. Um, I only, I made the decision uh, two days after the first case of COVID was announced. Wow! To, right. Um, so it is a risk. It's you can liken it to stepping out from from under your parents' um, roof or leaving your parents' home. Um, in in our, in hard times, you know, because there was a lot, there was support that that was provided to us um, by by SSL, um, which which we no longer have. Um, but the decision to answer your question, the decision was was made primarily because there there's there's a lot we have a lot of potential you know the company does have a lot of potential and um i strongly believe in the potential that we have and the opportunities and the team and uh, there's there's a lot of long-term decisions that i needed to make that would not have been beneficial in the short term to to sso especially them being a, a listed company Mm -hmm. and and also on on their part they're moving in a different direction you're you're going to hear some they were, they're about to make some very um some major announcements in terms of the direction of the venture capital firm um a lot a, a lot more bigger deals than that blue dot with a lot more um more exciting and interesting companies so it was just it was the right time Mm, I see. So do you have an intention to eventually list? Is that something that you aspire to or you don't think it's necessary? Um, aspire is a strong word. It's, it's something, it's something, it's a, it's a might be. Um, I, I do want to, to, to add value to our clients first though. That's our, that's our focus. So we're, we're evolving now. Um, we're about to offer um, and to introduce a lot more um, interesting services and, and products, and our, our primary focus is to ensure that our you know we're we're, we're exceeding our clients um, their 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 expectations. Listing does come with a lot of um, governance and requirements, and just a, a lot of um, scrutiny, not just from the general public, but from That's true. finance, but from finance Twitter. <laughs> that you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not true. sure. Yeah, I, I don't want to get distracted by that at this point in time. You know, I'm, I'm really just trying to, well, for now, stay afloat, you know, for the next couple of months, you know, however long this lasts. And then also to to, to really just ensure that our clients are, are happy and, and we're allowing them to make the decisions that they need to make. Mm. Remind me how much of the company SSLVC had? Was it 50%? So, yeah, so they so they had fifty percent um, of the company up up until a couple of weeks ago. Okay, and that was as of what, how long did they have that stake? So they so we did the deal in August of twenty eighteen, so around twenty months, um, they were part of us. Um, you know, and, and as a as an entrepreneur, you know that that especially you know someone like myself, um, that that came with a lot of 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 challenges um, in in the early stages. You know, um, one of them being just the whole um, culture shift of of not being able to make all the decisions by myself. You know, and having to run things by a board, and you know that 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 was an the initial challenge. Um, you know, after doing the deal. Yeah, because fifty percent—that's that's half of your company. It's not even fifty-one, forty-nine. Yeah, even yeah, split. Did sure. that cause a lot of tension or friction? It did cause. Yeah, it did cause friction. Um, uh, primarily with the previous um, management, though. Um, 
I think what what one of the things that constrained the relationship was was that you know VC was listed or is listed on the stock exchange, um, and and you essentially live your life in quarters um, as a as a as a as a as a CEO that's that that has a company on the on the stock exchange. In my opinion, I don't know for everyone else, but uh, you know you, you live your life in quarters and 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 you're expected to to send out very good reports every three quarters um and especially in you know this jamaican context where um our local investors are accustomed to 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 gains you know mm-hmm. um to quick gains if you know the the market has been doing well um so that did put a lot of pressure on on myself and you know like i said there 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 are several long term decisions that, that i needed to make that living living in, in in quarters would not have um, facilitated that. Mm, I yeah. see. So I mean, if if I were to advise you know any any other young entrepreneur, it, it would be just to you know be, be be wary of that or not wary, just be prepared for it. Um, you know, um, making losses in a business, contrary to what a lot of people believe, it is. It's, it's normal, especially if you're, you're investing in the business and you're, you know, your, your expenses are up because you are making those investments and hiring the type of people that you need to hire, um, you know, but one quarter, two quarters of losses doesn't mean that the business is failing. Uh, and that's from, that's from where I sit. Mm. You know, that's, that's a really interesting point, but, but clearly your business has been doing quite well. For you to be able to buy out SSLVC in less than two years means that you have expanded to the point where, A, you don't need their money anymore, and B, you had the money to, to buy those shares back. So, so we did. So we did grow. So we have grown consistently, um, you know, since since inception. You know, um, our financial year is June, is July to June, and and in the first six months of our last financial year, which have been, which would have been July 2019 to December 2019, we we did our existing or entire previous year's revenue in the first six months of wow. the, the following year. So we have been we have been growing. Um, of course, COVID has 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 thwarted that somewhat. You know, my, my plans for more than doubling our revenue um, may may or may not materialize. But um, yeah, we we're we're growing. You know, and and um, a, a lot more a lot more companies are understanding that you know, in order to survive, in order to make the best decisions, you need to be you need to be making those decisions with data, and that's that is what our mission is. Having learned from your experience with SSL VC, is taking another equity partner something that you would consider? Are you looking for another investor or you, you're content to leave the company in your hands and your company's hands alone going forward? Good, good, good question. So I'm, I'm trying to, to rough it out for as long as I can without taking on any, any other investors. Um, that's, that's the truth. Um, um for, for for more than one reason um i uh we are open it open to it though but but you know alignment of vision has to be primary so you know i i won't just take on any investor or another investor who who one doesn't understand the value of 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 this that we're in and the potential of the space that we're in and also that doesn't understand um, that it is a long-term play you know uh, you know data is a future um, and you know or the massive gains that will happen out of the space is going to take some time so uh, I think patient capital is the term it would have to be patient capital what's the next what's the next move for blue dot um, well, right now we're just trying to survive. We, we're going month by month. Um, we're just, I'm just trying to meet payroll every month. That's that's my that's that's the next step goes. Um, you know, we've we've we have lost quite a bit of projects um, within the first, I'd say, the first week of of business of of COVID of the first um, case. We lost almost thirty million dollars worth of wow worth of projects. Uh, 
All right. Um, slowly regaining them, though, because we've been able to prove to, to those clients that, you know, now is the time when they should be doing market research because consumer behavior is changing and lifestyles are changing. So they need to, you know, the, the profile of the customers um, are different and they need to be marketing to them differently than how they were before. Um, so, so yeah, we, you know, my, my goal, like I've said to my staff, is we're just, just month by month, just, just trying to survive. Um, outside of COVID, you know, we have several opportunities in the Caribbean. Um, we, I may, I may, we will most likely enter Trinidad um, in this period, within the next month or two, um, digitally to, to the Camino platform. Um, and, and um, you know, see, see what, what gains we can, we can get from, from, from them, you know, from that type of expansion. Yeah, I can see you look a little bit stressed there, Lauren, but <laughs> you know, no, the average person doesn't realize what it takes to actually meet payroll. You know, that's a big deal. No, so when I hear you talking about meeting payroll. Yeah, man. No, man. It's trust real. me. It's, 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 I, I'd say that you don't know stress until you, you, you can't meet payroll, until you're calling um, customers and you can't collect, check, collect checks. You loot. That is loosely sit down and ball over type things. Yeah. You know, and you have, you and have all your employees bills on yeah, your show, yeah. They have kids, they have mortgages, you know, they have their own lives to live, you know, and, and I'm and I'm trying to not have to cut any more staff and I'm trying to not have to cut salaries because they do work hard. Um, you know, and I, I appreciate them and which I just trying to keep the company afloat right now. You said That's, any more staff that you have made cuts? Yeah, I've had yeah, I have made cuts. How many? I have made cuts. I cut six staff members um a couple of weeks ago. And you know that again that was a horrible decision to have to make. It it's absolutely horrible decision. You know, we're we're a family here, we're a team. Um, and you know, like the, the only thing that I could do for them was I gave them supermarket vouchers, and and they're still on our health insurance plan um, for as long as I can keep them on our they'll be on the health insurance plan. Um, but we, we had to we had to lay off some stuff, and I'm really trying to not have to do that um, anymore. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Lauren. But your company yeah. is one of those that I am sure will rebound when this is all over because you offer something that's really innovative and something that was highly needed and I, I think a lot of clients are seeing value in that thank you thank you yeah. so thank all you. the best with your journey lauren thank you so much thank you for thank you for having me when we come back i've got your market recap and the analysts are standing by this segment of taking stock was brought to you by bulwark insurance agency insurance made easy time now for your market recap brought to you by sagicor investments think wealth think sagicor investments after weeks of decline the jamaica stock exchange advanced last week with the combined index gaining two percent 92 stocks traded across both the main and junior markets of the jsc for the week ending friday may 8 2020 50 advanced, while 34 declined and 8 traded firm. 112 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, totaling nearly $740 million. Trans-Jamaican Highway traded the most, with nearly 40 million shares changing hands. The stock gained 5 cents to open this week at $1.39 cents, just 2 pennies shy of the IPO price. Mayberry Jamaican equities traded the second highest, with people buying and selling nearly 10 million shares in the company. MJE was also a top advancer, its share price jumping 21%. The stock closed last week at $9.90. And Pulse Investments rounded out the volume leaders, with people buying and selling 9 million shares in the company. Pulse gained $0.22 cents to close at $2.26. 
Turning to the top advancers now, led by Key Insurance Company, which continued its massive gains, jumping another 34% to close the week at $9.71. Key is now up 362% in less than two months. T-Tech follows with its share price jumping nearly 23%. The stock closed last week at $4.73. On the losing side now, with theaters closed across the island, Palace Amusement saw a major decline. Its stock took a huge blow, losing nearly 49% in value, to close the week at $1,424.05. Bossridge Company also took a hit, nearly down 20%, to end last week at $3.13. And SSL Venture Capital Jamaica also fell 18%, down to $0.75. Cents. Market Recap was brought to you by Sagicor Investments. Think wealth, think Sagicor Investments. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, is brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers and Proven Wealth. Welcome back to Taking Stock. I've got a team of analysts to examine the week in business. We're joined by Group Client Investment Manager at JMMB, Peter Thompson. Research and Strategy Analyst at Sagicor Investments, Jody Ann Eris, and co-founder of Caribbean Value Investor and host of the YouTube channel Beyond the Stock Price, Devroid Davis. Welcome to Taking Stock. Welcome back to Devroid and Jody Ann. Welcome for the first time, Peter. Good to have you. All right, thanks. Nice to be here. Thanks, Kalila. Let's start with the Jamaican dollar because this slide continues as the politicians have called it in the past, the, the dollar slide, dollar grind and dollar wine. But it, it's no laughing matter, really. I see where the manufacturers are complaining. Everybody would complain because now at 146.10, it's lost 8% of its value since this whole situation with COVID, since we had our first case. Devroy, let's discuss some of the, the factors surrounding that. Why is that? So, um, one, well, naturally, one of the chief factors affecting the, the dollar is going to be the, the primary COVID situation that we're having now. Um, I'm imagining that, un unfortunately, we have not seen the, the worst of it. And um, even with to where the level is now at 146, there have been quite a few initiatives that um, the, the government is implementing in a bid to sort of stem really the effects overall on COVID-19, specifically as it relates to the, the, the foreign exchange and, and the dollar, um, we're, we're going to be seeing situations where the dollar is going to fluctuate. We were told to expect that um, as sort of like the new normal. We were told, to, we were told by the minister some months ago that we're going to start to see oscillations within the foreign exchange levels. That is where the U.S. is versus where the Jamaican dollar is. I'm imagining that one of the key reasons for the dollar slipping as much as it did is the fact that COVID-19 is having such a dramatic impact on businesses, on remittances, and on just the general earnings level of the the population as a whole. So that's really my take on it. Yeah. Peter, what are you noticing on the demand side? Because I imagine the, the supply side has tightened because of the factors that uh, Devroy just mentioned, remittances down, tourism also a big one. But what are you noticing on the demand side? Well, in terms of demand, there are still some basic um, foreign currency needs that have to be met. So even though we've seen where the price of commodities have fallen, um, and so oil is cheap, uh, nearly every raw material is, is cheaper. So imports should be less, as in the cost of imports should be less. Um, so the, what, we're, what we have, however, seen is that because of such uncertainty regarding um, where the next US dollar will come from, there may be some oscillation in, in the currency and as such, when you look at the volumes traded in terms of um, demand and supply, you're seeing uh, um, not a significant, well, not a significant fall off in demand relative to supply that, that differential. 
Um, what we do notice, however, and in terms of looking at the data, um, so even though the NIR has fallen, we're now at about $3.1 billion and change, in terms of the percentage of um, ex, um, imports that it represents, the number of days or number of weeks that it represents, it's actually higher than it was in March, um, based on the projections going forward. So, so the sliding the dollar is what's, not. What's to higher be than it was in March? The weeks, weeks of um, of oh, imports the export. that the okay. uh, imports imports that the the NIR can cover. So. Mm -hmm. So even though we've seen that, and even though we've, we've, we, we, we've seen the currency slide, it is not a surprise given that there is some uncertainty around the flows coming in. Now, going forward is where the, the real trick is and how do you, um, for manufacturers, how do they plan, um, what, how do they know what the price of currency will be a week, a month, two months from now, is a function of how well um, the policymakers step in um, there is the talk of uh, um, an IMF support. What does that IMF support seem like in terms of balance of payment support? Um, so that could be an influx of foreign currency that could stabilize um, the movement in the currency. Jodian, what's the likely impact on, on one's portfolio? Is there anything that you can do right now to mitigate against this? Um, I mean, there... There isn't much. I mean, I think what's happening is that COVID is affecting everything. So, I mean, if it is that you are to decide to reduce your foreign exchange exposure and hold cash, what you're going to hold it in, going to still be impacted. So, if you're going to move to equities, that's going to be impacted. So, it, it's right across the board that you're going to have an impact. So, I think the best thing is that if it is that you had a more long term view, then that you should continue to stay in your positions at this point in time. Because move, you don't want to necessarily move from one situation and find yourself in a worse off situation. Because everybody will be impacted by COVID. I mean, every asset class, every sort of investment that you can think of is going to feel some amount of impact. And to that point also, um, I would, what I would add is that in terms of portfolio and planning your portfolio, what you should be looking at is the assets and liability. If you don't have a US dollar goal or objective or um, liability in the future, trying to speculate on the currency to say, okay, I am going to increase my allocation to US dollar at this time because I, I believe it would go up. Um, you're taking on currency risk. It may not be a bad bet. However, based on the uncertainty relating to the future, it could be that there's an influx in currency because there is going to be a and an, a, an accompanying decline in demand for currency. And as such, it, you, you may see some correction in the, in, in the US dollar. So a portfolio strategy to say, okay, you're going to um, increase your allocation to US dollars at this point in time, um, just because you, you're, you're, you want to speculate may not be a, a good move. But in from a asset liability perspective, if your goal is in US dollars, then you're assets at this time should be in, in US dollars also. Let's talk about the, the impact of the shutdown on business. And we, we have shutdown in St. Catherine and now more recently uh, shutdown on some communities in St. Mary. So Devroyd, I saw that JP put out something about you know their business continuity plan as a result of the St. Mary shutdown. They're the biggest banana and pineapple growers in the country. Lots of their workforce comes from the area. Uh, what do you think will likely be the impact on their operations? It's a 14-day quarantine. All right. So um, I, ha I haven't seen the report put out by JP, but if we look at just the, the fundamentals as it relates to the impact of uh, a shutdown in, in any um, geographic areas and its impact on a particular business that is situated within that location. What we're going to see is situations where there's going to be fall off in production and a fall off in production will quite likely have a, a, a medium to sh a short to medium term impact on what revenues and those net profits are going to be. Additionally, the running costs of a business do not necessarily 
go down as quickly as falls as fall offs in revenues tend to happen and so we might see a situation where operating expenses are maintained however the fall off in in revenues due to the shutdown might cause a company to report um significantly higher losses than one might expect or you might even see a situation similar to what happened with um jam tees where despite the overall business itself doing well um securities that they might hold and in the case of jp they're one of the largest holders in in um kingston wars so securities that they might hold could be adversely affected um the the overall impact i'm anticipating from the shutdown um as it relates to come to districts within St. Mary is that we will see um, a fall off in revenues and in the level of production from um, companies like JP. Mm. You think we've seen the worst of it yet, Peter? Um, in terms of economic downturn for Jamaica or stocks in general? The economic downturn for Jamaica. All right. So, so right now, I think it's safe to say that we're living through a recession in that we are seeing a decline. Our, you know, most of the major foreign currencies to earn have seen decline. So we are living through uh, a recession right now. In terms of how worse it will get, um, I think that is a function of how quickly we're able to, one, get a vaccine, or two, um, there is some way to kind of balance shutdown and, and the health and, and managing um, public health and you know opening up what what does what does that look like um so the depth of it it's and it's hard to tell whether or not we've, we've seen the worst but at a minimum or, or what we do know is that we have seen a, a part of in in terms of shutdown our biggest foreign currency or one of the biggest foreign currency earners and employers in, in the country has shot. What we, we are seeing signs of some of them looking to open up. So if it is that we're seeing openings more than closing, then it is it, it, it could be said that we've kind of come over the hump. But again, it's hard to predict based on how economic activity picks up. A big part of how we our earnings and our outlook is a function of what happens globally and especially in the United States. Mm -hmm. So the pace at which the United States opens, the pace at which um, business and people feel confident will determine um, how long we stay down here. But whether or not we've seen the, the worst of it, um, it's, it's too, too, too soon to tell, actually. I would hope that we've seen the worst of it, but we really, absolutely, you're right. It's too soon to tell. Jody Ann, though, we've noticed where the, the government has also suspended the importation of agricultural products. What effect do you think that's likely to have? Um, I, I think it would help, seeing that we do have, where we have been trying to do a lot of import substitutions. I think it will help generally in terms of just how it is that we have our trade balance in general, um, it will pro provide some support to those companies that produce agricultural pro products. So if it is, you can have more of the market share because there isn't any importation coming in and you have reduced demand. So for example, if you look, schools are closed, so canteen operations will be down. And as such, you may not be doing as much, buying as much food for your household as it is if it were that you're sending a child to school. And so for those companies that would supply schools and alike, if it is that there isn't a co as much competition coming in from imports, then it gives them a greater market share during this time when there's reduced demand. So it should work well for companies within that sector. And I think one of the things that you may see coming from this is that other sectors will petition the government as well to reduce importation of other products. So that they can also have a better chance of meeting the demand now that it is generally reduced in the marketplace. 
Uh, Devroyd, I know you're a guy who, who really follows the market day to day, probably hour to hour. <laughs> I imagine you sitting in front of a computer screen all day, looking at the ticker and looking at the numbers go up and down. What have you noticed in the past week in terms of market reaction, I should say weeks, in terms of market reaction to this whole situation? All right. So um, certainly there has been a... Um, a great fall off in terms of the volumes that we've seen trading across the board, as well as the price movements that we've seen. Um, a lot of companies, though they may have seen a, a great reduction in the prices that they were trading at originally, what we're really seeing now is where there is sort of like a leveling off of prices generally across the board. However, volumes have now started to move down significantly. We are observing days where stocks that were previously trading in large quantities are trading literally zero volumes. Um, companies oh. that, right. So, and then we're also seeing where companies where you would have expected the reaction of the market to be such that it would push these share prices upwards. Uh, um, the market reactions have really softened, especially as it relates to companies such as um, those that are in the export space. Um, Jamaica Tees, again, I mentioned this earlier, but it actually comes to mind. Um, Kingston Wharves, we've seen where that has basically softened. CCC, there has been basically um, very low volumes trading and pretty much within a very narrow band. And that's really what we're seeing around um, companies speaking both to the main market and the junior market. Now, I should mention that there are situations where um, we do see a lot of um, activity within a particular company, but this is coming on the back of either really good earnings reports or other developments which the market is now just starting to absorb. Um, before we, we talk a, a little bit about um, specific companies, I want to just jump back to a question you had asked um, Peter earlier, and it's whether or not we have seen the worst of it as it relates to the economy and the market. And I think he, um, Peter spoke um, quite in depth about the effects and the contributors that we need to consider when we look at what the market, what the economy as a whole could look like and whether or not we're really past the worst in that regard. For me, that's a question that's too hard to answer. What I can say, though, is that I don't think we are past the worst as it relates to the market reaction to COVID-19. And the primary reason for that is that we are currently in earning season and most of the companies that are reporting earnings right now are for the period ending up to March. Now, March 31st, that is. So we have not really seen, we've not really seen the true impact of COVID-19 on their operations as yet. Those reports, I imagine, will start to surface in around June, the June to um, June, July, August the June to August earnings uh, reporting period. So do I think we've seen the worst in the markets as yet? No, I do not. Wow, those are, those, those are all excellent points, Devroyd. Peter, you wanted to jump in here. Yeah, I, I was just thinking um, out a lot, right? If you're really in the pricing of securities, no, our stocks, no. Um, any analyst looking at the numbers and projecting forward, I'm assuming, right? that your, your estimate for earnings um, going forward should be quite conservative if it's based on the fact that a big part of the economy was shut down. Um, so I'm expecting poor earnings. Now, the question, the market reaction to that poor earnings is what's important, right? Because if I was expecting poor earnings and the earnings are, are poor, then I, no new news there. However, if the earnings are worse than I was projecting, then I'll sell it down some more. If it's better than what I was expecting, then you may see some, some cushioning. The, and then to, the, to his point, 
a lot of companies and not all companies are made equal in that there are some companies that may be able to ride through this and the earnings may not be significantly affected or um but in general the market and companies should expect poor earnings in a quarter to come um you know we've never seen a state in which we shut down the economy for so long I, I agree i agree with peter what i don't what i what i will say um is that i don't know that the market has fully priced in those lower oh. expectations for earnings as yet so jorian you want to jump in here and tell me what you think especially i want to come back to the point that devroy raised to about the volumes showing that the volumes are are really low why do you think that is? Is it that people are they're seeing where the prices are, that the prices have come down, and people are just unwilling to sell right now, saying might as well just hold off and ride out the storm? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a bit of wait and see. Persons are saying, you know, let's see what is going to happen further. I think the person you would have priced in expectations from early on. So once we have that first case of COVID, then automatically you would realize that we'd follow the trend of other countries and there'd be some sort of shutting down within the economic space and as such you would figure that you will have lower earnings for the for, for the quarters to come and so you'd start to see that decline but because we're in somewhat of a standstill sort of mood and information was coming late as to exactly what the government would be doing how would schools be reopening and all of that persons were in a mode of more wait and see and some persons are legit just holding say you know i think in future it going to get better and so i just hold my position and not necessarily sell and wait it out there are other persons who on the buy side are thinking it could possibly go lower and let me wait a bit before i jump in and buy so i think as it is now it's really a wait and see to see what else is happening what other news is coming is there a vaccine how is it that the economic variables are going to look and persons are then waiting to see how all of that information come together and then make a make make a move. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap, I want to ask about key insurance. I know Devroyd, you've been following what's been going on with key. I noticed last week we, when we did the monthly market recap in April, key insurance was up like 200 percent following their takeover by Grace Kennedy in late March. So what's up with the that price jumping 200 percent? What does that say to you, Devroyd? So key is an, is an interesting observation for me. I've, I've not really been participating in the trading wars that I've been seeing happening with key insurance. Uh, what I really think is happening is that there are persons who are now a bit more bullish on key, given the potential for Grace Kennedy to now recapitalize the company. Um, the news of Grace Kennedy's takeover, I think, was also a, a bit shuddered by the fact that um, we were in the heights of COVID-19 and all of that. We've since seen Key migrate to, or graduate rather, to the main market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And that's really when we've seen a little bit more attention being placed on the stock. Um, speaking specifically to um, Key's market and the opportunity that might be there, I think the, the major drivers then would be more absorption or really more response to the Grace Kennedy takeover and the potential for Grace Kennedy to recapitalize the company, as well as the fact that we expect that claims expenses against key insurance assets will actually be lower due to the fact, due to the COVID um, situation. So. What um, Peter said earlier that there were actually some companies that could come out of this whole situation looking better. If, price, um, if pricing is anything to go by, then key is clear, is seemingly one of those companies that investors expect to benefit. I'm also observing a similar situation with General Accident, just to point that out. Oh, okay. interesting. All right. Well, we're going to leave it there for this week. Thanks so much for joining me. Really glad to have you on. Until next time. Let's take our final break. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers and Proven Wealth. That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share with a friend. Also, check out my other features, Money Mondays JA, 
Money Moves JA, and What's In It For Me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kalila Ray. And if you want to connect with the analysts this week, check the description box below for their contact information. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Tell a friend about taking stock because investing is the new sexy. So let's make it cool to talk about money.